Dr. Chuck, the science schmuck. Synchronized. Hopefully synchronized. Now, you may notice that this particular video uh, around me may have much higher quality in the fact that the little thing up here is not flashing. I don't know why it was doing that, but I found a way that you can potentially increase the quality of these videos substantially. I also drilled a hole in the side of my camera and installed an aux port. Yes, it is that easy. Just so maybe the sound quality is bad. Maybe the sound quality is good. I don't. I usually have a scanner over here, which is just Audacity, which shows me the waves. I don't have that now, so who knows what's going on. Now, what am I doing? The same question I ask myself every single day I wake up. Well, I was informed at work that we have a, uh, a white elephant in the room, which somebody actually had to explain this to me and give me a list, because I, I didn't know what white elephants or secret Santas are, considering especially that it's the middle of the summer for me, and not the Australian summer. It's, it's, it's a time delay. So everything is weird for me. But I need to make a gift. And I think to myself, what is the best possible gift you can give a person? The answer is ticks. So the thought for me is, how can I make a tick out of our good old friend concrete, using the same principles that allowed me to create this cube? Now, uh, the cube does have difficulty in that it, since it's carbon-based, it takes a lot longer to cure, and I'm a procrastinator. Not really. I actually prefer to do work way before I actually need to do it. So I don't really have time to, um, you know, wait for the curing process and wait for it to dry with all the sugar. Also, I'm eating the sugar. I don't want to use all of it on more cubes. So we're going to use straight up regular concrete here. Although, note that the cube has issues with corner filling. I have created a solution in the form of this. Sifted concrete. Yes, I know. I know what you're thinking. Why, why, you dirty schmuck, did you not just buy cement? Why did you buy concrete? The answer is concrete's cheaper, and I have a lot of it left over from the cube. I didn't want to spend $30 on a thing of mortar. Great, I'm covered in dust. I'm agitated because I haven't been drinking my night coffee. Or my night fermented Mountain Dew. Yes, it still exists, and it's just gotten grosser. I'm still drinking it. Usually late at night when I can't see it. Now... Firstly, so that I don't forget, this is going to be important. So, the thought becomes, well, how do you create um, a shape with concrete that's not a cube? How do you create a tick shape? Ticks are, for those of you who live in a place where ticks don't exist, which would be anywhere that is, you know, Antarctica, they're sort of roundish. How do you make a round shape? Well, my first thought was a mold, but then I need to make a mold, and that's hard, and... Why don't I do something that I've never done before? The answer being balloons. Yes, I'm definitely hoping that the people at work don't ever see this. It's one reason why I don't actually share the fact that I have a YouTube channel to most people. Other than you, my... Uh, I think there's eight subscribers now. Isn't that nice? Thank you for subscribing. I know I tell people not to like and subscribe, but it does please me when people uh, subscribe. It pleases me. So, that balloon, I realized, was too small. So I've got this balloon. <gasps> that didn't work at all. Seventeen and a half inch balloon. I don't know what it is in metric. Needless to say, it's the largest size of balloon I could find at the Walmart. Um, I'm dizzy because I've been just huffing balloon air for like the past 30 minutes before I started this video because the balloon needs to be pre-stretched. You note that it's all floppy. It's because um, you may notice that when you fill a balloon, I feel like this is going to get eaten if I'm not careful. You may have when you fill a balloon with your air or with breath, it fills up real big and fat, but it's pressurized. Water balloons, same thing. You hook it on the hose, it pressurizes. This will be done by gravity, which means that it can really only fill to the size of the balloon and a little bit extra based on the internal weight, so we can't, you know, pressurize concrete without a... There is a machine that does that. It's huge. 
Uh, I don't have one because it's like a $100,000 piece of equipment used for pumping concrete over buildings. So, we're going to try to do this by hand. I've never done this before. Don't know how it'll work. Let's go about doing it, and if I fail, there's always a backup. So, firstly, I need my juice. Oop. Alrighty. Now, you'll notice that uh, sifted concrete is very fine powder. You definitely don't want to breathe that unless you like your lungs turning into concrete. Uh, what is it made of? This is mostly the cement and... Um, Got to stand up and move this because I keep stepping on it. This stuff's mostly the cement and sand. And I say, oh, it's the whole thing cement. No, the whole thing's concrete. There's aggregate. It's little rocks. I took all the little rocks out because they uh, create filling errors. And this doesn't really need to be that strong. Got here some ginger ale. It's not actually ginger ale. It's water. I drink a lot of ginger ale. Not because I have stomach issues. I just like the taste. Like, I just guzzle this stuff. Guzzle itself. Got myself a bamboo rod. Stir that up. You may notice this is also in part of a soda bottle. It was Dr. Thunder. Because if you do, it, it's basically Walmart brand Dr. Pepper. If you drink enough Dr. Pepper, or in my case, Dr. Thunder, since you are what you eat, you eventually get a PhD. Unfortunately, mellow yellow is not really a very effective antidepressant. I don't even know if you've ever even seen mellow yellow. How many people out there drink mellow yellow other than me? It's like Coca-Cola's Mountain Dew. So isn't that Sprite? No, that's Coca-Cola Sierra Mist. I know my sodas. I drink a lot of soda. Mostly Walmart brand because I don't have a lot of money. Hence why I create all my gifts out of random parts that I find mostly on the floor. I'm having uh, less issues than I was before with the voices, because my fish tank actually has a lower pressure. That's uh, concrete. Uh, I really don't want to touch my mouth, but eh, you always got to wonder. It just tastes like grit. Ugh. Now you will notice that I have taken the lid of the Dr. Thunder once again and made myself a funnel. So now the hard part, move, you're blocking the people. That was rude. Why am I so rude? Again, it's the lack of coffee. Getting that in there, not easy. Don't know if this is going to work. Might fail completely. I've actually done several of these videos that have failed. You'll never see them because they didn't work. Yeah, I got a pile of magnesium sulfate over there that's mostly made of ethanol. Ugh. Turns out uh, that... Oh, no. It's already hard. Hmm. Yeah, this is some hard stuff. I think it hardens faster without the aggregates, so I'm in trouble. Nope. Oh. A stick! Yeah. Come on! You may notice that concrete is a substance of very high viscosity, one of the reasons why it's so hard to pressurize. However, um, I've done the math, I've worked it all out, and everything functions despite all the stout. How many, have heard, how many of you have heard that band? Um, basically, concrete, even in its fully hardened form, has a density of about 2 grams per cubic centimeter, which is double that of water. Interestingly enough, most stone is not actually that dense compared to metal. Ugh. Probably just going to have to cut through this. So you will find that it's, you know, not actually that heavier than water, which is why I'm kind of hoping that the balloon doesn't just burst from the weight. Well, this is actually going to take me a while. So you know what? I'm going to jump cut you right to the end. It's all in there, and 
It is important to kind of hurry at this point if you're attempting, I don't know why you would ever attempt to do this in real life. This is something I do in my basement for funds. It is hardening. So this is roughly what it looks like and it is undergoing chemical change. Uh, at this point, it is important to make any modifications you need to make, which in my case is the installation of mouth parts because it is a tick. Uh, if you've ever looked at tick mouth parts under a microscope, they, it's two components around a central hypostome, which are um, mimicked by this wing nut and bolt. Hmm. Kind of taking a risk here. I'm just going to cut the nub off and cut it down to the, you know, the core and hope that the entirety of it doesn't shoot out like a <laughs> world's worst haggis. A competition you didn't even know you were in. Yeah, it, it's a, that was kind of a mistake. You can see it's kind of a, the pressure is causing it to leak out its various fluids. I'm going to take that wing nut off and just try to get that into a rough position. Um, if you were to just tie it off and let it harden, you would have the world's worst water balloon, considering it's a concrete balloon. It would certainly cause some damage. Don't make a concrete balloon and then blame me when you threw it at somebody and they died. Now, you'll also notice that a flat surface is going to make one end flat. So what's this box full of peat moss? Because I have a lot of it. You may remember this from the cactus video. Uh, so how in the world am I going to do this? I make a depression. I'm going to try to lift this up and gently insert my haggis into the peat moss. Toward the ultimate goal, uh, the point is peat moss is very soft very soft and squishy, so you can easily create a divot that will not flatten. Uh, you can also use sand, but I find sand is heavy. Peat moss is very light, so you can kind of pack the peat moss around it in the shape you want without really having the sand squeeze out the goo out the front of your haggis. So that is one advantage, theoretically. Um, begs the question now, is it within my ability to attach the legs right now? Push that in harder. We are losing a little bit of concrete, but that should be fine. Concrete, you know, gets pretty hard within probably 30 minutes. Now, I suppose for that time, therefore, I can go over what the legs are. Um, Ticks have, ticks are an arachnid, they're related to spiders and scorpions, and specifically mites. Uh, tick is more or less a type of very specialized parasitic mite, sort of. They're a lot bigger than most species of mite. In other words, they have eight legs. Uh, except as larva, when a tick is born, born, I got criticized for that in something that I wrote. They're not born, they are hatched, they come from eggs. When they are hatched, they have six legs as a larva. They feed once to become a nymph, which has eight legs, and then feed again to become an adult, which has eight legs, and then feed one more time to lay eggs, at which point they die. Except soft ticks. Now, don't you get me started about soft ticks. That's an entirely different, the enti completely different. Go on for days about soft ticks. So, uh, you got this here haggis, like sitting in peat moss. Uh, these are legs. A tick, if you've ever looked at it, generally speaking, the legs are about as long as the body is. They're usually sort of round. These are made of metal, which I have previously cut using bolt cutters. You notice, you, know, you won't notice because the resolution on this camera is quite literally potato, not literally potato. I'm joking when I say literally. It's figuratively literally potato, unless it actually is made with potato parts. But I took it apart. There's no potatoes inside. My uncaffeinated aside, aside, these are pointed. I sharpen them with a grinder. You know that one? Again, if you're using a grinder, be careful. Grinders are almost always looking for meat. Referenced in a Judas Priest song. Also in a um, something else, which 
I'm surprised more people don't get that joke. So the idea of these pieces is to insert them into the haggis in the position tick legs would be, which is, uh, they don't come from the middle exactly, they're sort of towards the side of the bottom. And uh, ideally, align them against this box so that the legs stick out. The concrete will harden around these. You say, well, what? You schmuck, you dirty schmuck. Why am I dirty? Because I'm covered in concrete. Concrete doesn't really stick to free metal all that great. That's why rebar is lumpy. Well, if they pull out, I can just uh, go back in. And actually, I may even just pull them out of the finished product. I really just need the holes. I can glue it back in later. I mean, this isn't a critical weight-bearing structure here. It's just to mimic a, a large tick. Um, the question is, do I really want to go after this side of the haggis? And I think it's my only option. So we're going to see how that ends up doing. And I'm going to insert these roughly into the right area, poke my way in, Ooh, it's gross, because it's not like popping a balloon. Oh, ew, you can't see it, but it's, it's oozing. It is like popping a haggis. I've never had haggis. You can't get it in America. It's illegal here. Okay, sound may be a little weird, but that right there is what this looks like. Oh, yeah, looking at it in the camera, what you must be seeing. Uh, as you can see, it, this is the balloon, very haggis-like in nature. Um, these are the legs that have been stuck into it. You can see there's oozing of concrete around them because they're releasing liquid. The mouth part is up here, which is the problem I'm having is that it is leaking. And also it's a lot, ew, ugh. it's a lot more extended outward than I would like. I can go back and I can potentially make changes that can fix that. Uh, Vinegar washes, soaking it in acid to remove the extra concrete. The concrete isn't really going to contaminate the peat moss because it'll harden and I can just get rid of it and use this peat moss for pot potting plants. So, right now, I need to allow this to dry. So, I will be back in probably about uh, 12 hours, hopefully, and then we can see what it actually looks like in there and if the consistency is appropriate. So, that's going to be zero time for you because it's just going to, you know, Stop here and then right back and, well, it looks like I'm back. It's in the middle of the day, too. Of course, since it's the middle of winter, it's not actually day. There isn't really day. It just gets darker. Now, I've waited around 24 hours for this to hopefully harden. You can kind of see the waste material is everywhere. We also notice I just snapped it right in half of my hands. It looks like we have a friability issue. Uh, without aggregate, maybe this concrete type, it just isn't sticky enough to hold together. But at the same time, there's a good chance that structural properties of it just aren't really that great when it's wet. And, um, one thing you do have to consider is that concrete, when it's little pieces, doesn't have really good structural properties. It has better bulk properties. So, to be totally honest, we're in an area of totally unknown for me. I've never done this. I've never done anything even like this. I mean, the theory behind this cube was entirely different. That's pyrolysis-based uh, organic carbon. This is just pure concrete. This could fall apart in my hands. It could just shatter into bits. And I'd be oh so sad, but I always have a backup. If this doesn't work, I'll just make one out of cloth and stuffing with sewing. Because everybody can sew. Not necessarily everybody can create a haggis out of a uh, concrete. So, let's stand up here. And I don't believe I need safety goggles because it should all be hardened. I will use my hands. Ooh, it's kind of gross in there. Weirdly warm. And there we have it. Now it does seem weirdly soft. Not squishy soft, just, you know, materially soft but also very heavy and, you know, pretty solid. Uh, I'm going to just continue to use the peat moss as a cradle. Just to prevent any... Well, no. That's not going to work because I can't reset it exactly where it was. It shouldn't deform. Shouldn't is the effort word. Now, you may notice it's white. 
because the balloon is still intact. I need to peel it. Oh boy. Now, that's the thing. I don't know if when I peel this, it's just go it could just fall apart. That skin may be the only thing holding it together. But there's a reason I'm not a medical doctor. It's because uh, removing the skin does make your patient fall apart. It actually doesn't. I'm pretty sure you could survive without the skin if you were like in sterile culture media. You just sort of fill up with water. So, I mean, in theory, rubber does not really bond very effectively to... You guys hear that? I don't think you heard that. It's like something huge just thumped, and I don't know what in the world that was. But rubber, which is what the balloon is made of, it's made of latex, uh, it doesn't really bond to concrete very well, meaning that I had initially figured that the only way to potentially get this off would be to basically burn or melt it. But in actuality, what I'm seeing is that it really just disconnects, like unwrapping a, an actual haggis. One important consideration, the reason why I'm doing this sort of early, is because the concrete really, I don't feel like concrete does well when it's just wrapped up in rubber. It needs to breathe. Uh, I want it to be on a relatively clean surface, but I don't want to ruin it. Um, Didn't work at all. Eh, I'll use its own skin as a pillow. So, as you can see, bulk property-wise, it's pretty durable, pretty sustained. You can definitely see that there are air hole issues with the surface to an extent, and it, like they look like little holes, but I don't think that uh, affects the overall structural bulk. What's important now is that after removing the skin, I need to let this concrete breathe. Uh, I was explaining that before, before I got distracted by myself. Uh, concrete is not normally sealed in watertight vessels. Concrete is a hydro... It, it, it's a water-based process. The formation of this material is entirely water-dependent. The water has caused the cement to congeal. But the water needs to leave the vessel. It needs to escape. The concrete needs to breathe. Before I do anything further with this, I want to let it sit here for at least a couple hours at room temperature, potentially give it a little heat in the oven if necessary, just to be sure that it dries completely. But, as you can see, it is solid. If you had just taken the balloon, filled it with concrete, and tied it off as a water balloon, you definitely could lob this at someone, or something. World's worst water balloon. As I said before, don't do that. So, I will have to jump cut you to the hour or so before when I actually, hopefully when this hardens, and I can begin doing the final processes, which are, just a, a foreshadowing here, fixing the mouth parts, final paint job. Well, welcome back. As you can see, our tick has largely cured. It's still a little damp. Concrete does take, you know, a long time before it's completely cured, but it's hard enough to work with now without risking damage. You'll notice that it has assumed a much more acarine shape. It has actually even assumed a tick-like texture, which I did not expect because of the presence of peat moss. Uh, the shape, because this was originally the bottom on the peat moss, is largely flat, as you would expect, and much more rounded, with a divot on the bottom, because that was where the air bubbles were. You don't want the air bubbles on the top, you want them to form on the bottom, because people don't see the bottom. You'll also notice that I have bent the legs, which... Maybe you would have liked to have seen me bending legs, but it actually takes a long time, and I didn't think you really wanted to sit through it. Normally, in most places, if you wanted to bend legs, what you would get is a bending robot, and that would just automatically do it. But I can't afford a bending robot, so I had to do it by hand. Good thing I've still got both of them. They haven't both flown off yet. As an example, uh, with this, because they are embedded in concrete, you don't want to just grab the egg... Grab the egg and lank it. Grab the egg and lank it. Grab the leg and yank it. I hope yank means in your language what it means in mine, which means tug hard. Um, as an example, you use two sets of pliers 
which if you were actually doing this and you wanted to be fully safe about it, you would put on your goggles. You would grab where you want the bend with your big pliers. My dominant hand is my right hand for most purposes. Weirdly enough, I shoot with my left hand, not rifles. You can't really shoot a rifle left-handed most of the time. Pistols. I shoot, I pull the trigger with the left hand. It's weird doing it with the right hand. Um, so you would grab where you want your bend, grab where you want to apply force, and then turn. And I'm not going to bend this one because I want to use it later. So that's how you would apply a bend. You'll notice that in this design, the legs go down, out, and then down again. If you look at a picture of a tick, uh, I will probably cut one in if I remember. Otherwise, just go to the CDC. They have lots of pictures, or just type it into Google. I'm telling my audience to do my job. How conceited am I? But the point is, on a tick, the legs sort of come out the bottom, they go to the side, and then they curve down. Ticks are weirdly fast and agile. You think they got little stubby, like tiny legs? No, they've got big, long hook legs that are usually as wide as their body is long. Uh, even a fully blood-fed tick, which looks a lot like a grape, will climb a vertical surface with no trouble. It'll just go whoop, and it's gone. You, you can't hold on to them unless you turn them over, and then they, they can't roll themselves back. Unfed ticks can. They'll just flip over. they got a good sense of gravity. Don't know what organ is responsible for that. It's actually an interesting research question, how a tick knows when it's inverted. I, I have no clue. But, so you'll notice that the legs are now attached. Uh, one problem I did notice is that one of the legs did poke through the top. Uh, it made a point. I mean, if you just rub that, that's actually a pretty nice texture. But there was a point. So I took a file and just filed it off. That's what you do when things are pointy. You file them off. Uh, if my head was pointy, I'd file it flat. I actually don't. My head is pointy. Uh, you haven't seen me with a shaved head, but I shave my head every few weeks, and that's what it looks like, a pointy bean. Now comes the problem of painting. In order to make it look more tick and less mechanical concrete monster, uh, we need to paint it. How do I paint this? Well, I actually don't know. Something keeps moving in this building when I'm down here, and I don't know what it is. Oh, well, it's not really my problem. So, in order to paint this, I'm going to use spray paint. Similar to how I did the welcome mat. If you haven't seen that episode, it's long, boring, before I cut these down. So, the way this will be the kind of the opposite is that I need, well, actually, it's very similar. I need to create a void, which I want to paint, with blue tape. What organ on the tick am I actually copying? It's called the scutum. Uh, female ticks, generally speaking, will have a hard-shelled plate near the head. I'm representing this as a female tick because it's more obvious. Male ticks, the scutum goes across the entire body, and it's just a big plate on the top. If you find an Ixodes scapularis, that's a deer tick in North America, you're probably European, so it would be Ixodes ricinus. It's a black thing in the front that looks like, that's why it's called scapularis in America. It looks like a scapula, which is a religious garment. So in order to do that, I need to create the outline at the head of the tick. But here's a problem. On ticks, that organ is usually curved, except in Ixodes kukii, it's trapezoidal. Uh, I think Mark's Eye also has it like that. Don't get me started on Mark's Eye, because it'll turn into a debate on communism, and I could talk at you for days about that. Um, I need to create a curve. How do I create a curve? With this. Yes, it's not an ideal curve, but hey, I'm not an ideal human. I've aligned blue painter's tape into rows, into a sticky sheet, and then use skizzers. These scissors cost me like $3 at Lowe's like 10 years ago. Uh, and I created a curve, which will sit over the top of the tick where I want the curve to be. As close as I possibly can get it. Then the edge where it goes down to the mouth parts, which it'll go just past the mouth parts. Uh, the mouth parts here are that bolt. Remember that bolt is halfway stuck into the concrete. It's a three and a half inch bolt. You can only see the front inch. It has a wing nut. We will also need to paint that black. That represents the barbed hypostome of a tick, as well as the, oh, 
why can I never remember the word? I believe it's the palps. It's at least analogous to the palps on like a scorpion. Spider. Scorpions have claws, which are the same organ that spiders have as palps. I think it is. Actually, I think the, the claws on the scorpion might be analogous to the spider fangs. You'll have to fact check me on that. Don't know what the stinger is analogous to. Kind of glad that ticks and spiders haven't evolved that yet. Although I do fully expect within a couple million years they will be able to fly. Spiders. Probably not ticks. They're really successful with being flightless. Okay, so as you can see, maybe you can't, maybe you can, don't know, change the, change the camera angle because the, it's completely gone. They took my water meter because I was abusing the privilege. No, that's not actually true. It was my gas meter. I've attached the, uh, the necessary outline. It's not perfect right now, so let me uh, move it over a little, get it set up. Kind of eyeballing it. it. It may not be 100% perfect, but hey, I mean, there's a difference between art and drafting. I'm bad at both. That's how they're similar. I actually was pretty good at drafting when I did that in school. I should have made a career out of that instead of making giant ticks in my basement. So I got here my good old Rust-Oleum. Got my craft suit on so I don't ruin my clothes. Got my Googles so that I don't ruin my eyes. It is important to wear these. Remember that trend? I think kids are still doing it where they keep spray painting their eyeballs for fun. Don't spray paint your eyeballs, kids. That should not be a public service announcement that I ever need to make. And yet I just did. So I'm going to take this wing nut off, but you can't see it. Just playing with my wing nut. That's going to have to get painted separately. The tick is on paper, so I don't ruin my already ruined table. You probably can't see my head because the camera has a new angle and because, but I don't really care. I know it's not YouTube format worthy, whatever, but I don't think you really want to see my face. You want to see giant concrete ticks. And spray paint. I get all the necessary pieces. Uh, I'm kind of contemplating, should I spray paint the legs as well? Uh, probably not. They're fine metal. I mean, it doesn't look very... Spray painting my wing nut! Oh boy. How many people get to do that? Like, how many people get to spray paint their wing nut just on a whim? Like, oh yeah, you know, what am I going to do on this Tuesday afternoon? I'm going to spray paint my wing nut. How many people get that privilege? That's what I like about being a, um, I hesitate to call myself a YouTuber because I'm not successful at this. I know what I am. I'm a schmuck. And there we go. That's actually, uh, Concrete is porous, so it's sinking right into the concrete and getting really down in there. Also on my finger. Let me turn that tick around so you can see it. Oh no, I just kicked the bucket. This is the most awkward stance I've been in in at least three hours. So, spray painted the tick to create the paint job. I just gotta wait, I don't know. 30, 40, 50 minutes, maybe even till tomorrow, and that should be done. And then, you know, if you really wanted to be more realistic, you could do a base paint of red or brown, but I'm going to leave the rest natural concrete and just do that front part. And I'm back. That, that didn't actually take me that long. Weirdly, it smells just like vomit down here, which is odd because I can't remember vomiting. I guess I must have. Or two, there's somebody hiding there. Or three, this stuff smells like vomit when it's drying. But nevertheless, we're here with the moment of truth, revealing the paint job that I've done. It seems to have hardened pretty nicely, also on my fingers, although it's mostly washed off. 
Hopefully it's just a matter of removing tape, but it never is, is it? Well, I didn't exactly get a highly successful run. As you can see, it's still got a degree of running along the surface of the tick. Not 100% perfect clean line, so that's disappointing. Regardless, let's move on to the mouth part of fixing. I mean, nothing is perfect. So, we got this. Uh, weirdly enough, spray paint does not stick well to zinc which is what uh, this is coated in. Uh, oh, it's not going on well, is it? That's a bit of a problem. I don't know if I've cross-threaded. Isn't it ironic that uh, usually this is the way it is in almost every time you do a project. It's always going to come down to failures within the last few steps. Fortunately, I contain a tremendous amount of torque. I mean, you do not want to get a purple nurple out of these hands. Now, if you want, have you ever had a purple nurple that bleeds? You will. I'm kidding. I, I can't stand the thought of touching some random's nipples and just, like, yanking on them. That sounds disturbing. This conversation got disturbing. This is what happens when I don't drink a gallon of coffee, but you know what? It gives me weird dreams. Then again, that's probably just the, you know, eating things I find on the ground. I don't do that as often anymore. Those berries in front of Walmart tasted super funny. Um, I got here some glue. I don't sniff this glue. Nobody actually sniffs glue. It, that would be ridiculous. I mean, can you imagine somebody actually sniffing glue to get high? That's dumb. Don't sniff glue, kids. You'll end up like me. Zero prospects in life because I can't manage to find gold. How can I be a prospector without any gold? Can't get prospects without, you know, gold. Okay, okay. I figured it out. It took a little bit of inspiration. I had to take off my shoes. Interestingly, taking off my shoes increases my intelligence to at least, I don't know, 0.2% more than it normally is. I have an IQ of like 87 right now. I'm cranking with gas. Like, you know, those gas-powered cranks? That's nonsensical. It's a joke. It's not funny because I came up with it on the fly. Because I do not have coffee right now. Because it's the middle of the night on a Wednesday. Did I say that already? I don't remember because this is going to be spliced to another video. So, I fixed the problem. As you can see here, hopefully my fingers are covered in spray paint. Notice the nice curve, increased size. I repainted it went over the parts that had, you know, sept, because apparently that's the issue. Uh, concrete is porous and not exactly flat, so no matter how good your tape is, some of the paint is going to get through. So I quickly redid it, spray painted my finger, not my eyes, and went over the top again. And that recovered, you know, a curved line, also increased it to, you know, look okay. Uh, the mouth part is affixed. I don't know if that'll get cut out of the last one. I, I just screwed it on. Use cyanacrylate glue. Did not sniff it to hold it on. And with that, the tick is done. Look at that. That's nice. That is ready to go uh, to be presented to somebody at work. I don't know what they'll think of that. Hopefully they'll think it's as funny as I think it's funny. I really enjoyed making this thing. I never molded concrete in this way before, and it turned out such with a, such a nice texture. Maybe it doesn't look 100% like a tick, but I dig it. I had fun. I hope you all had fun watching me make it, even though I kept getting confused and under-caffeinated because I did like three of these videos in the middle of the week instead of on Friday. You can try it too if you want. All you need is a balloon and some sifted concrete and some, you know, accoutrements. You may even be able to make other bugs or even more complex shapes of animals that are also roughly spherical or spheroidical. And with that, uh, I'm actually redoing the conclusion because the last conclusion was a super downer. And I feel like you, my audience, who thank you for watching, need to have, you know, levity. Hence why ticks for Christmas! I have a weird obsession with parasites.
maybe it's like Freudian, not in that sense, but in the sense that I think of myself as a social parasite. Hmm, epiphanies. I'll not think about that until later. Uh, the three things that I needed to cover before I sign off. One, I do appreciate comments. Likes and subscribes are nice, but you don't need to, so don't bother doing it. This channel's not monetized. I highly doubt it'll ever be monetized. It's for my fun and for your fun of watching me have fun. But if you do have a suggestion of something sciency or scientific or even scientifical that you want me to get to, leave it in the comments. I don't know about YouTube, but your uh, YouTube usually puts the comments above the videos when you turn it upside down. So write up there the comments that you want me to try to science, and I'll see what I can do. I always appreciate suggestions because I feel like my ideas are a little dull and parasitoidish. Um, Instagram? None of you have found me yet. I'm still hiding pretty well. It's not in the description. And that covers all three things that I needed to cover. So, I will now present you with my extra. Um, Mary Tickmas. And a happy tick year, I guess. No, extra.